Hi, welcome to Fleming's Tasting Room. I'm Master Sommelier Michael Jordan, and I'm delighted to announce that on April 16th, Fleming is going to offer an amazing curated wine and food dinner all across the country at every Fleming's, where we are going to pair amazing courses of food with their wine soulmates. Tonight we have the opportunity to tell a great story, and it's one of a, a very thoughtful process that went into creating these food and wine pairings and ending up with an opportunity for our guests to explore and discover on their own the amazing pairings of food and wine. I'm going to walk you through the steps necessary to create a roadmap to guide our guests through this amazing experience. I want to make sure that we're not using language that's either too complicated or too simple for our guests. We want to make sure it's easy for them to understand the pairings and everything that happens tonight, but not make it too complicated. Most importantly, enjoy yourselves. This is a great night for Fleming's. Before we get to the food and wine pairings, I want to go over some of the mise en place and setup for the event uh, and preparing the wines properly for service. We're going to want to make sure that every bottle of wine is opened and checked, white wines and red wines. And then we're also going to want to double decant all the Cabernet Sauvignon based wines. And I'm going to show you and demonstrate how to do that in just a moment. But before we do, I want to go through the staging of stemware for each of the courses. Of course, there will be one glass for the reception. There will be one glass for the first course, one glass for the second course, and two glasses side by side for the third course. We will want to try to remove those glasses in between serving the courses and stage new stemware clean fresh glasses for the next course. This is my favorite part. I want to show you all how we double decant a bottle of red wine. And the reason it's my favorite part is because this can really showcase our service to our guests and, and really at a, at a much higher level uh, we'll be demonstrating service. So, in order to double decant, which means we are going to decant the wine from a bottle into a decanter, then we're going to rinse out the bottle without disturbing or getting the label wet, and then we're going to put the wine back from the decanter into the bottle so that we can serve it from the bottle at the table. The first thing, you will open the bottle as you usually do. I would like to point out that you always cut the foil below the lip because some people do tend to cut above the lip, but we, we want to make sure you got a nice clean cut below the lip there. Once you've got that, the process of decanting is to make sure that we leave the sediment in the bottle and get all the clean fluid into the decanter. So we're going to use a light source, and I'm just going to go ahead and dump that wine into the decanter and let it bubble and fizz so it's oxidizing and mixing with a little oxygen. I'm going to look through the shoulder of the wine bottle to the light source and when I can start to see the sediment, if there's any sediment in this bottle starting to rise up into the shoulder, that's when I'm going to stop pouring, making sure there's just clean fluid in the decanter and what's left and sediment in the bottle will be rinsed out, washed out, and a brand new, clean, fresh surface inside to put that wine back in the bottle. Okay, so now we're going to protect the label of the bottle so that it doesn't get wet or soiled when we rinse out and clean the bottle. I'm going to take a couple of our nice Fleming napkins. I'm going to wrap it around here. Then I'm going to take one of our serviette and wrap this bottle so that we can go actually wash this bottle out and bring back the bottle nice and clean and put that wine back into it. We've been off rinsing out the wine bottle and emptying out all the water while protecting the label so they're clean and dry. And what we're going to do now is actually put the wine that we decanted back into the bottle with the use of our little funnel and 
Again, we're gonna protect the bottle so we don't spill any drips of wine on the label. And now we're just gonna pour very slowly and gently all the wine from the decanter back into the bottle. The thing here, you wanna be careful because if you pour it too briskly, the wine in the bottle is gonna to wanna to fizz up and it might actually start coming out the top. So just pour gently, a little bit at a time. Don't fill the funnel up because you're excited and you wanna pour it in there. It's, it's uh, gonna be really cool when we go to the table with already decanted wine in the bottle so that every guest can see the bottle while you're serving the wine. From the guest perspective, this is a much better level of service, especially for a dinner where you wanna showcase the wines that you're pouring. So there's that. And now, beautifully, we have double decanted bottle of wine. Steak and Cabernet Sauvignon have been culinary soulmates for as long as we can remember. They go perfectly together. But some cuts go a little more perfectly with certain wines. Tonight, we're gonna to give you the opportunity to taste two different cuts of steak with one Cabernet Sauvignon so you can experiment and see which one you prefer. We're gonna work with you to make sure that we're getting the very most out of the experience possible. Let's start by tasting the wine. This Cabernet Sauvignon from Arrowwood is from Sonoma County and features three of the valleys of Sonoma, Knights Valley, Sonoma Valley, and Alexander Valley. There is also a little bit of Petit Verdot, Merlot, and Cabernet Franc blended into the Cabernet Sauvignon that gives more complexity. So let's taste it. Red, black fruit, plush, seamless, and a gorgeous texture. But there's a little tannin as well. And that's the part that we really want to pay attention to because it's the tannin that will make the most difference in pairing with these different cuts of beef or any protein. Now let's take a sip of the wine and then try a bite of the New York Strip, which is on your right-hand side on the plate. As you taste this steak, you may notice it's a little chewier. It has a little more fat content, quite juicy. Notice the difference between the filet mignon and the New York as it pairs with the wine. Some of you may prefer this pairing. There's no wrong or right answers. It's just important that we pay attention to the fat content, the juiciness of the meat, the chew and the amount of tannin in the wine to come up with your favorite pairings. And you can do this with any kind of protein, not just tonight, but every night going forward. We talked about cut of beef where pairing is concerned and also the tannin in the wine, but what about the difference between wet and dry aging? You know, the aging process with beef, whether it's dry aged or wet aged, can be profound. And we're gonna show that to you and allow you to taste the differences going forward here. On the right, we have the Fremark Abbey Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. This wine mostly comes from sun-baked, benchland, gravelly vineyards in Napa Valley, and a little bit comes from higher elevation vineyards that tends to give the wine a little more intensity and structure. It's primarily Cabernet Sauvignon, but it also has Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and Malbec blended in. Uh, this wine has a very plush texture, and uh, it's very smooth, but quite long finish. The wine on our left is the Chateau Le Seg from Bordeaux. It is a classic expression of Saint-Emilion Grand Cru on the right bank of Bordeaux. 
where they have a much cooler and a shorter growing season than we do here in Napa Valley. So the wine is more savory and a little more herbaceous and has those types of earthy complexities as compared to its New World counterpart. So first let's try the Chateau Le Seg on your left with the wet aged ribeye that's on your left as well. We try these two together. Pretty tasty. But maybe not exactly perfect together. The herbaceous, uh, intensity and earthy flavors and the texture of this wine may overwhelm that wet aged steak. Uh, let's try the Fremark Abbey Cabernet Sauvignon with that wet aged steak and we may find the textures and the flavors just fit a little more perfectly together. In fact, we may end up with a perfect pairing uh, with the plush ripe fruit flavors and that wet aged cut of beef. Now let's try the two wines with the dry aged cut of ribeye that's on your right. Let's try the Fremark Abbey first this time. The New World wine, younger wine with the dry age. Taste them together. And you may find that this dry aged steak with its very earthy flavors, that mushroomy potato skin, kind of cheesy, earthy flavor is a little much for this beautiful plush fruity style wine. Uh, so let's taste the Chateau Le Seg with that dry aged beef because I have a feeling that these two will really work well. The earthy characteristics and herbaceous qualities of the Bordeaux with the earthiness and umami flavor of this dry aged beef are going to work really well. So aged wine tends to be earthier, works really well with the dry age. More youthful wine from the new world with a more fruit forward style will work really well with the wet aged beef. I hope that you enjoy a preference of one or the other because nobody's right or wrong. It's all based on what you enjoy. But the discovery is fascinating.